Good morning, class 12. We are continuing with your literature course. And here we are with your second poem, An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum. Before we uh, start this poem, I wanted to tell you that here, poet Stephen Spender, he deals with this poem and he has written this poem which deals with the theme of social injustice and class inequalities. With this, I wanted to tell you that uh, you all are studying in good schools, but many students are still there. Many students in the whole world are there who are studying, but they are studying in a very deplorable condition. Their schools are not well equipped. The places is not nice where they study. So they are uh, living in different scenario, in different place, with a different viewpoint of them about the world. Let's study about such children, how they get education in this. Obviously, this poem arises the question that um, there should be social in there should be social equality at every level and uh, every child has the right to get education in a proper way so we find all these things in this poem let's start with the poem it's a beautiful uh, a piece of work by the poet where uh, he tried to arouse that feeling among everyone that one should do some work related to child education. So, uh, obviously it raises the responsibility, social respon our social responsibility towards this issue. Let's start with the poem now. Underline the words which are underlined in the poem and then you will be writing down the word meanings of it. And moreover, please try to understand what poet wanted to say. In poetry, when poet is saying uh, something they are said in very few words the depth of the lines should be understood very well let's start with it far far from gusty waves these children's faces like a rootless weed their hair torn round their pallor the tall girl with her weighed down head the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes the stunned, unlucky hire of the twisted bones, reciting a father's gnarled disease, his lessons from his desks. At back of the dim class, one unnoted, sweet and young. His eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in the tree room other than this. Now this first words of the poem tell you about the classroom about which the poet is talking he is describing the children what kind of uh, children are there uh, far from the first underline the words the words gusty means strong pallor means pale appearances now he is saying that far from the gusty wave these children faces like rootless weeds he's saying that these children look as if the strong waves have come on their faces there's strong waves and this children faces looks like rootless weeds. just as the weed is uprooted from the grass is uprooted same way their face look like their hair are not arranged properly through their pallor pallor hair means their pale appearances on their face, their pale appearances is there. Their hair are not done properly. And a tall girl, she is with a bent head. Why she had a bent head? Because she is poor girl. They are so uh, poor that their heads are bent down with that burden of that poverty. The paper seeming boy. Paper seeming here refers to very lean and thin looking boy. Uh, because the poor children who are malnourished, they are very weak. So that's why he is being compared to paper seeming boy with rat's eyes. 
and his eyes are uh, referred as rat eyes Ra his rat eyes because rat eyes are always searching something always looking here and there for something that's why his eyes are being compared with rat eyes they stunned unlucky hires of twisted bones stunted hair means that they are not fully grown the children are not fully grown and they are unlucky hires of the twisted bone because they get the disease uh, in hire they get uh, the disease from their parents of twisted bone twisted bone is a disease of rickets hair poet wanted to refer and which they are uh, getting from their fathers they inherit from them and this gnarled diseases these are the disease which forms not in the or they they are um, due to this this uh, twisted bones are there so that kind of disease they get from that and this they are not learning their lessons in the class but rather they are just living their life which they get from their parents at back of this dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrels game in the tree room other than this now poet here says that there is another boy who is sitting at the last place and he is being unnoted he is different from all others because his eyes are living a dream just as an every normal child in the class he is looking outside the beautiful world where some animals are playing trees are moving so they look outside and they live their childhood in that imaginative world he is also living that life in a dream he is uh, he is looking at the squirrel who is playing games outside so just like a normal child he is living his dream in the tree room and he is seeing that uh, squirrel outside his classroom window so it is the description of a classroom in a slum area where elementary school is a school pre primary school where children are very small and they uh, you all know that children are very imaginative at this age but few children in the class which were where a girl with a dull face uh, with the head bent down with their face dull and one child with a disease of rickets are described on the other hand a child with some bright eyes who is living a dream is uh, described here so there is a hope one side one child is also a hopeful child there presented to us so a lot of um, things uh, which are to be remembered by the children should be there that this poem uh, a lot of places metaphor and similes are used uh, similes are the comparison of things and metaphor are the uh, when we compare uh, simply we uh, refer something as a thing but we don't compare it simply we refer it is an applied simile uh, just as here the uh, similes used here are that paper seeming boy they are comparing boy with a paper seeming boy fine so um, this is a and uh, th uh, this could be a uh, if they will be comparing it paper seeming boy or like paper then it would be simile but paper seeming boy is a metaphor because he the poet is simply applying it uh, direct simile they are not comparing they are referring that boy as paper seeming so um, another uh, uh, simile here used is like uh, they have used uh, their like rootless weed they have compared uh their faces with rootless weed so it is a simile used here by the poet so these are the poetic devices which are used in poems by poets so you must learn this you must understand this next on sore cream walls donations say shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities belaid flower trolleys valleys open handed maps awarded the world its world and yet for these children these windows not these maps their world where all their future painted with a fog now here uh, 
poet is trying to in this second verse a poet is try, uh, trying to present you the irony uh, ironical situation here where he is saying that the the walls of the room are very dull they are decorated with donated things which are which which, which uh, include shakespeare's picture where his head is balled balled head is there so it looks as if uh, there is a sun rising civilized domes riding all cities civilized domes are referred to the institution of a civilized world so some buildings or institutions are displayed in the picture in this um, on the walls of the classroom uh, belled flowery trellis valleys these are the beautiful pictures of bells beautiful valleys and uh, flowery flowery things so uh, these picture in the classroom is presenting totally the opposite situation in which these children are living they are living in a very dull world open handed maps maps which are changed by the open handed maps are referred to that the maps which displays the areas of different countries cities and awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not these maps their world for these children their this world is not the real world because they are living in a different world which world where all their future is painted with fog because they are living in a factory area probably and so fog here is referred to a dull atmosphere where uh, smoke dust everything is there uh, because these slum areas are in such places where uh, factories and all these things are there so it creates a very um, bad atmosphere around them so that's why probably the poet has referred here that uh, painted fog that their outside world is like that a narrow street sealed in with lead sky the poet is saying that this these children where they are living that is a very narrow street with lead sky lead sky again means a dull gray color um, uh, here again uh, they are um, using metaphor the poet is using metaphor here far far from rivers capes and stars of words these children are very far away from the beautiful sights of rivers valleys and the stars of words means they are very far away from the real knowledge because their world is this slum area surely shakespeare is wicked the map is bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal so here shakespeare is also try in this uh, picture of shakespeare in the on the walls of their class and even these maps which are on the walls they are, are also not a good example for them because this beautiful world of ship sun and love they force them to do the crime they tempt them because when we don't have something in our life and we see that beautiful world we are tempted towards that we are attracted towards that and when these children are not having these things in their life which force them to do the crimes like stealing for lives that slyly turns into their cramped holes and for them the lives are slyly very cunningly they are living this life and they are living this life in this cramped holes cramped holes is their living places where they are living in the na narrow liars they are don't having good houses even from fog to endless light nights and these children are living a day with endless nights dull days with fog and endless nights there is no hope uh, presented here to these children and on their slang heap these children wear skin peeping through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass these children are so undernourished that they don't even have good food and that is why one can see the skeleton down their skin they are so lean and thin they wear the spectacles of the mended glasses so they are living in very Uh, poor conditions all of their times and space are foggy slums so blot their maps with slum as big as 
do do so they these children spend most of their time in this dull area of slum areas and so uh, whatever is their maps whatever is their space is the slum area next poet is urging the powerful people uh, it's a kind of request to the authorities where he wanted that something should be done for these children unless governors inspectors visitors this map become their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town and show that children to green, green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history their whose language is the sun poet here is asking the requesting the authorities and inspectors to visit and he wanted that they should transform their life he wanted to open the windows to them they should explore things they should be there should be brightness of education in the lives of these children they sh- otherwise they are going to break uh, uh, this uh, barrier should be broken everything should be provided to them then only there should be uh, that uh, fog which is in their lives that dullness which is there in their lives that is going to open up which is going to clear away and this uh, refers the poet wanted to present that through this uh, when these children are shown to this green fields this beautiful world which run azure on gold sand um, uh, uh, run azure refers to blue color and when they will be shown open sky this beautiful golden sand refer to beaches and let their tongues run naked into books they should get education run naked into books means they should learn the knowledge education then and the white and green leaves open then what they are going to get they are going to be uh then they are going to be economically sound and history their whose language is sun and po- poet ends the poem on a very good uh, note that uh, that these children's mind have the brightness of sun and they when these brightness will be there in their brains it is going to clear all the fog and the future will be bright so that what the poet wanted to clear um, through this poem and he is ending a poem with a positive note so a lot of meaning which poet wanted to convey the responsibility towards society how a uh, Uh, these children should be treated how they should be given uh, they should be given a equality in the society so that they can also change their future and in that then only the real sense we would be able to say that we are giving education to these children otherwise with this differences this education which they are giving uh, they are given in a very dull and slum, slum atmosphere they are not going to achieve anything so uh, mm, uh, this poem reflects first the negativity and then the it ends with a positive note let's discuss some uh, word meanings of the poem here are the word meanings related to poem given in your book all these poems and word meanings are given to you you have to write down these uh, st- st- words and meanings in your notebook after that uh, uh, you will be writing the summary which i have discussed with you children this is the summary uh, of your uh, chapter related to this uh, Uh, poem and you are going to write down this in your notebook an elementary school classroom in a slum poem written by stephen spender where poet gives a vivid description of a school classroom in a slum with children in the class the faces of the children are dull and gloomy their heads hanging low in the sadness due to being poor 
and unwanted they have diseased bodies inherited from their parents at the dim end of the room a child with bright eyes dreaming of playing outside with squirrels he is different from others in the dull room the walls of the room are dirty many uh, donated things in the room like charts images pictures of shakespeare poster of trallies wellies full of churches and flowers symbolizes beauty to these children the world is not the one they see on these posters but what they see outside of the classroom window they live in the slums their future dull and hopeless they are far away from knowledge understanding these pictures is beyond their abilities they hate everyone as these tempting things forces them to do crimes like stealing the children are so weak that their skeleton is visible through their skin due to the lack of nutrition they have been restricted to the slums the poet requests the authorities to allow them to see the real world which is shown on the maps they should go to the green fields sunny places and warm beaches with the blue sky which will fulfill their hunger for knowledge then they will become economically empowered the poem ends with a positive note that those who make history are the one who shines like the stars uh, like the sun so here we end the poem on a positive note this is the summary which i will be giving it to you in the homework notes but as well i have discussed it in the lecture thank you class thank you very much